book of John, starting with chapter 1, verse 1. I'm going to teach a little bit more than normal today because it's we're coming up on Christmas. And sometimes you need to understand why certain passages were written the way they were written. And this particular one is important because of who wrote it. The Apostle John wrote this a long, long time ago a specific purpose for why he wrote it. We're going to learn that purpose and learn what he was teaching of this. Here's what God's Word says. In the beginning was the Word, capital W, and the Word was with God, and the Word was fully God. The Word was with God in the beginning. All things were created by Him. And apart from Him, not one thing was created that has been created. In Him was life. And the life was the light of mankind, and the light shines on in the darkness, but the darkness has not mastered it. A man came sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that everyone might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. The true light who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was created by him, but the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not receive him. But to all who have received him, those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become God's children. And children not born by human parents or by human desire or a husband's decision, but by God. Now the word became flesh and took up residence among us. We saw his glory, the glory of the one and only, full of grace and truth who came from the Father. John testified about him and shouted out, This one was the one about whom I said, He who comes after me is greater than I am, because he existed before me. For we have all received from his fullness one gracious gift after another. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came about through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only one himself, God, who is in closest fellowship with the Father has made God known. You may be seated. Today's sermon is titled, Before Jesus Was Born. You know, we, we make a big deal about birthdays, especially famous people. In January, we're going to celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday. And I remember the big fight to get his birthday named a holiday. We, have, we march on his holiday to, to represent who Martin Luther King was and to, to, to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King. And I want to correct that and say Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Sometimes folks forget he was a Christian man. He was a pastor. All right. He was not just MLK. He was Reverend Doctor. He was an educated clergy who preached the Word of God. And that was part of why he went for social justice and civil rights, because he believed that God came to set us free. And he preached that message to us. In February, we have President's Day. George Washington and Abraham Lincoln have birthdays, and we have a holiday for them, and we celebrate these great presidents of, of our United States. And each of us has a birthday as well. Everybody knows, I don't care how old you get, when your birthday rolls around, you want somebody to remember it's your birthday. Amen? Amen. Hello. Amen. I know if somebody forgets my birthday in my house, <clears throat> it's not going to be pleasant for the next few days. I need to get my gumbo on my birthday, right, honey? Mm. That's my birthday. Forget my gumbo. And our first lady can make some gumbo. Makes it two days. It's some serious gumbo. But I, that's, I like to recognize as much as I don't, quote unquote, I don't like getting older. I want someone to remember my birthday. And that's how we are. Well, in December, we have a birthday that we celebrate, and it's Jesus' birthday. Now, we don't know if Jesus was actually born in December or not. He probably was not, but that's the day that historically we have chosen to celebrate his birthday. And Christmas Day is about Jesus' birthday. It's, it's the day that we call Jesus' birthday. We say, happy birthday to Jesus. But is his birthday the same as these famous people? Is Jesus, see, our birthday was when our life started. Amen? That's why it's called our birthday. It's the day you were born. It's the day your life started. 
But did Jesus' existence begin in Mary's womb? Did Jesus, the Son of God, start as a child? Is, is that where his story begins? Is that where everything about Jesus begins? Because if you listen to it be told, that's what everybody thinks. That Jesus started right there on his birthday. That his, his existence started then. That somehow that's what it's all about. That you have people even say, well, you know, there's the Old Testament and there's the New Testament. I follow the New Testament because that's Jesus stuff. But the Old Testament, that was, that was for them Jewish folks. See, in the time of John, there was a heresy called Gnosticism. And Gnosticism was characterized by an intellectual and philosophical approach to Christianity. These were people who had become Christians but decided they, through their intellect, they were going to figure out about who God was. Some of you all know sometimes... You can be really smart and stupid at the same time. Amen. 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 See, the Gnostics, they had simple beliefs. But their belief system wasn't the way ordinary Christians believed because they were smarter than the average Christian. They were more intellectual. They, they would look at the common Christian and say, well, y'all are just, y'all just not quite intellectually bright enough to take our teachings. And this is what they, they, they decided to construct a philosophic system out of Christianity. And they, they were troubled about the existence of sin and evil and sorrow and suffering in the world. And they couldn't figure out why that existed. So they worked out a theory to try to explain it. Here's what the theory was. In the beginning, two things existed. One was God and the other was matter. One was God, the other was matter. Okay. In the beginning. Now, I don't know where they got that from, because my Bible doesn't say that, but you know, we're going to play along with them for a while here. Matter was always there and was the raw material out of which the world was made. The Gnostics said the original matter was flawed and imperfect. So we might say that when the world was made, it got off to a bad start because the material was flawed and imperfect. And so they went even further. They said, God is a pure spirit, and a pure spirit can't touch matter, which is impure. So we, we're going to work out a way of how creation happened without God. So here's what they said. God couldn't have possibly created the world because it's imperfect. So basically he set up a series of emanations from him. And as the emanations got further and further from him, they were less and less God and closer and closer to matter. So finally, an emanation got so far away from God that it was able to create the world. And at that emanation, it was distance, and so it was able to, to make that, and that creator God was utterly divorced and, 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 and he was an enemy of the real God. Make sense so far? Okay, I didn't think so, but you know, this is what they believe. They said the creator God was the God of the Old Testament. He was evil. He was not good. He wasn't a good God. And that the God, he was different and, and, and hostile towards the God of the New Testament and Jesus Christ. So we had two gods. We had the, the bad God and the good God. Y'all as confused as I am? Because I read the same, I don't know how they got that out of that class, because I read the same Genesis. I don't see that nowhere in there. But according to them, this is what they believe. And this belief started spreading throughout Christianity. People start believing. How many of y'all know when you don't read the word for yourself, that's you can it. get messed up? That's it. Right. You can start believing stuff that the Bible doesn't even say. Right. And so Jesus is born, Jesus comes, Jesus has died, Christianity's growing, you've got these intellectuals teaching folks stuff that's not even, and they sound good because they're really smart. Y'all heard smart people, they sound really good and eloquent. They can say things, y'all can watch those documentaries, those scientists, and they sound so intellectual, and they use those big million dollar words, you don't know what they mean, and they sound really good, you just kind of, wow, that must be true. Because they're smart. They got a PhD in something. PhD could be piled high and deep. <laughs> anyway, so John, when he wrote the Gospel of John, it was a challenge to the Gnostics. Because they didn't believe that God actually came in the flesh. 
Because God wouldn't come in the flesh because the flesh is evil. They believe that Jesus was a spirit being that walked the earth. And that he was not flesh and he didn't come here. And he was not the same God who created the world. So John wrote this gospel to set the record straight. And the reason he did is because John was there. John was there. John was one of the first disciples called. John was there at the cross and watched the Savior die. John was there when the Savior came back to life and was resurrected. John touched him and grabbed him and was there with him in the flesh. So John knew that what they were saying was wrong. So John starts his gospel off in a familiar way. In the beginning. What other book of the Bible starts that way? Genesis. He was trying to let folks know, in the beginning, let me go all back. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was with God, and the Word was fully God. Just in case y'all got it twisted, let me tell you what was really going on. See, the word used for word here is the word logos. It's a Greek word. It means word and reason. It means there is no beginning to this. So what he was saying in the Greek was, there was no beginning to who I'm getting ready to talk to you about. He was there before the beginning. How many of y'all, Genesis chapter 1 verse 0 says this, before there was a beginning, there was God. God existed before everything was created. So there's nothing that was made without his hand. Here's what John states in these first few verses. The word of Jesus was already there at the very beginning. The world is not one of his created things. The word is not created by God. The word was not created by God. The word of Jesus was not created by God. Why is that important? Because he was God. Thank you. He is God. Yes. He wasn't created by God. He is God. That's important to know because there are some religious beliefs today that will tell you that Jesus was a God. In fact, they take this scripture and say, and the word was a God. It's there. There's certain religious beliefs, they pass the little Bibles out. New World Translation, y'all know the rest. Read it, it says it right there. And the word was a God. No, the word was God. The Word was there before creation. That means Jesus was there before creation. The Word is not part of the world which came into being in time. God exists outside of time. When He comes into time, it's an interruption of time. He's there at the beginning. He's there at the end. He already knows what's going to happen in your life. He knew when you were going to be born, knew what was going to happen, knew you'd be in church today, knew all the things about you, and knows what else going to end. Because He doesn't exist in our time. That means Jesus already knew everything. The word is part of eternity. It was there with God before time in the world began. If the word was with God before time began, then he's part of the eternal scheme of things. That means that God was always like Jesus. What? See, sometimes we read the Old Testament and we say, that, that God was, ooh, he was angry and mean and he was a loving God. But Jesus, there are people say, I like Jesus. Jesus was loving and kind and peaceful and blonde hair and blue eyes and walked around two fingers up. You know. No, God was always like Jesus. Jesus was like God. God is a God of hand. God is a God of love and a God of judgment. You need to read the word. God always was who Jesus did. What Jesus did was this. Jesus came to show us what God was always like. Hmm. He came to clear up things about who God was. He came to say, now you, you kind of got that little belief a little wrong. Let me straighten it out for you. When he got criticized for eating and doing things on the Sabbath, he said that y'all got the Sabbath all wrong. Well, we're, we're, uh, Jesus, who are you? I got a doctor behind my name. I'm, you know, I'm a Pharisee. I'm a da 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 da. I don't care who you are. I'm God. And I'm telling you, you got it wrong. How many of y'all know sometimes we don't want to hear what God has to say? So when Jesus came, everybody didn't like what he said. 
See, the New Testament tells us that God has always been like Jesus and that Jesus opened a window in time. Jesus decided to come in. God made the decision to say, I'm going to open a window in time. I'm going to interrupt time and step into this world to show them what I'm really like. See, in the Old Testament, folk didn't get a chance. Every time that God tried to show himself, they'd get scared. When Moses was talking to them and God would come in and Moses was like, come on, y'all here? No, Moses, you listen to God for us because God is a little too powerful. We can't take that. That's what they did. The people didn't want to hear from God. Moses, you tell us what God said. And sometimes we do that in church. Pastor, you tell us what God said. That can be dangerous. But God didn't want that anymore. He said, I want everyone to hear me for myself. I want every person to have a relationship with me because he went back to when Adam and Eve were created and Adam and Eve walked with God and talked with God and heard from God directly. And Jesus said, I want that relationship again. God wanted to get a relationship with us. Everybody say, God wants a relationship with me. Say it again, God wants a relationship with me. Remember what you're saying? You mean the all-powerful, almighty God wants to get to know me? Yes. That's why he was born. He wanted to find out what you experienced. He wanted to find out what it was like to be born. Because remember, he was never born. Hello? So he was in the womb going, okay, this is what this is like. And when he was born into the world as a baby, he understood finally what we had gone through, what the birth process was like. And as he grew up, he got to know what it was like to walk this earth as a human, what his prized creation was going through on a regular, everyday basis. But he was God. <coughs> the Word was with God. That means the closest connection there can be is between Jesus and God because Jesus is God. So if you want to find out about God, you have to listen to what Jesus says. No one can tell us what God is like. No one can tell us who God is better than Jesus can because Jesus is God. See, if I have a relationship, I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody who exists right now that can tell you more about my wife than me. Why is that? Because I know her better than anybody. I know the good, the bad, the ugly. There's not a whole lot, a whole lot of bad and ugly because the first lady is perfect. She just walks on water. She's a beautiful, gracious woman. <laughs> See how gracious she is. Thank you. But I know her better than anybody. In fact, she knows me better than anybody knows me. She knows me better than my brothers and sisters. Knows me better than my parents. Because she has been living with me, beside me, sleeping beside me for 20 years. And put up somebody, somebody, somebody pray for the first lady. She had to put up. <laughs> When you have a relationship like that with someone, they know you, and you know them. That's like Jesus and God. They've been together for eternity. So if you want to know who God is and how he is, Jesus can tell you. Jesus can show you. That's why he came, because he wanted that relationship. The word was God. That means Jesus is God, period. These people try to tell you Jesus was a good prophet. He wasn't. Just a great prophet. He wasn't just a good man. He wasn't just a minister or priest. Jesus is God. Period. See, that messes people up. I mean, he was born. How can God be born? Because he's God. He can do whatever he wants. God created everything. Jesus created everything. Because the word, according to what John tells us, the Word created everything. All things were created by Him apart from Him. Not one thing was created that has been created. That means that baby that Mary held in her arms was holding the entire universe in place. What? You know, when y'all hold our babies, we, they ain't holding nothing together, right? Our babies, they just, you know, pooping and peeing and crying, howling, always needing something. But the baby she held, Holding the entire universe together. Mm -hmm. The baby she held created the universe with his words. His words had that much power when he said, let there be light. 
That's what she was holding in her hands. This baby housed Almighty God. That's not like us. This baby was destined for greatness and perfection because it was already perfect. He was, here's what the word says, he was in the world and the world was created by him, but the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not receive him. His creation didn't know him or receive him. God was sitting right there and we didn't realize it was God. He messed up the religious folk. Because they kind of like God being far off so they can make up stories about him and, and create rules and regulations and tell folk, well, you're not worthy of God, you are. And then this, this God comes along and says, no, they're all worthy. That's it. What? Wait a minute, now, that, that person he's with, that's a prostitute he's with. Why, why are you letting her, you know, does he know who she is? Yeah, I know who she is. She's one of my creations and I love her and I, she needs me just like you need me. Huh? That means it doesn't matter what you've ever done. God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't care about who your father was or who your mother was or what town you were born in. He doesn't care about all that. All he cares about is you give me your heart and I want a relationship with you. I want to get to know who you are. That's why Jesus was born. In Genesis, one of the things God talked about, he said, the child of your, this, this woman will crush the serpent's head. What do you mean by that? That's what Jesus came and did. He was born out of flesh to fulfill that prophecy. And then stepped on Satan's head and said, you no longer have victory here. The people who believe in me are going to have power and authority over you. What? Yeah. That's why he came. To give little old me, little old you, the power and authority to beat the enemy. Isn't that amazing? What kind of love is that? That he would come off his throne, come down to, from heaven, become born in flesh with all, sitting right there and say, you know what? I'm going to let my power set aside for a bit to show them how to walk this life. I'm going to walk it with them. I'm going to show them how to I'm going to teach them how to be like me. I'm going to teach them to be what God wanted them to be from the very beginning. And if they just believe in me, they can have eternal life. What kind of God do we serve? A God who loves us. A God who wants the best for us. A God who said, I want them to have something that they've never experienced. See, Jesus came to bridge a gap. Jesus came to tell us that there's more to life than what you have. What you have is just part of life. I want you to understand who God is. I want to bridge the gap between you and God. I want you to get to know God on a personal level so you can understand how, how powerful, how loving, how merciful God is. He wants us to understand and know God on a different level, a different way. He wants us to know Him on a personal level. He's your personal God. He's not up there in some big mountain throwing down lightning. He's right here with you, around you, all the time. Once you accept Him as your Savior, He's in your heart. He now resides inside of you. Do you know that? When you decide you want Jesus in your life, he takes your spirit, which was dead, and gives it life again. So now you're born again, and now God resides inside of you. If you who's saved in here? Who, who's, if you're saved, raise your hand. You have God residing inside of you. What? Yeah. Almighty God, creator of the universe, is residing inside of you and I. Other religions don't teach that, do they? See, our God is greater. Our God is better. Our God is, and he wants that. He wants to be, and then he wants to surround us. He left the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the Holy Spirit to guide and teach you about all things. God will still be with you in spirit now instead of in flesh. 
That's the God we serve. That's why Jesus came. So Christmas Day is not about the baby. It's about a bridge between us and God. It is about us recapturing what Adam and Eve had. Relationship. Where in the cool of the day, you can walk with God. When you're driving your car, you can be with God. When you're in your bathroom singing them gospel songs, you, you're right there with God. Amen, somebody. Amen. When I'm going through trouble, God is right here with me. When I'm going through good stuff, God is right there with me. When I'm praying on my knees for my family, God is right there with me. That's why it's called Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus means God saves. He is our God. And Jesus was born so that we could live. He was born so we would know who God really is. Amen? Amen. Amen. Stand with me. <coughs>